<clears throat> for this section, we're going to just talk about uh, polynomial division and, the, and uh, polynomial division, both long and synthetic. But prior to that, we need to talk about a couple of things, and one of them is the division algorithm. You're familiar with this in some sense, but not necessarily in the, quote, highbrow geeky math sense. So your, your understanding might be something like what I have on the screen, 948 divided by 32. 948 is the dividend, 32 is the divisor. And the result of the division is called the quotient. So let's do this division. How many times does 32 go into 94? Twice. And so that 2 times 32 is 64. And I'm left with 30. That number, of course, better be less than 32, or else we could have divided a, another 32 into it, but we couldn't in this case. And so we carry down the 8. And how many times does 32 go into 308? Of course, if you were doing this without some knowledge, you'd have be trying an 8 or a 9 or something like that. And in fact, it turns out to be 9. So 9 times 32 is uh, 18 here, which is looks promising, but 27, 28, and we're 20 short. So we would say that 948 divided by 32 is 29 with the remainder of 20. And that should be familiar to you going back to these with simply just numbers um, like I've done here. <clears throat> now, in our situation, oh, well, let's just continue with this for, for a second uh, and think about this in uh, algebraic terms. This uh, 948 uh, would be this value. Let's call it, um, I don't know, uh, n. Yeah, yeah, yeah. n, and we'll call, uh, I don't know what's doing there. There, q times d plus r. So what's happening here is this is your remainder, this is your divisor, that's the 32, this is the 20, and this is 29, the result of division, and this is your original number, 948. So how this kind of works in algebraically is, if I took n, if I took the equation and divided everything by d, divide by d, we would get n divided by d is equal to, if I took this term and divided by d, I'd be left with just q plus r over d. That doesn't mean that this is the remainder that is the remainder, the r part. But this isolates what would be called the quotient to the result of division, and that would be the result of n divided by d. If my remainder is 0, then we would say that n, excuse me, that d actually divides n, meaning it divides it, I think the youthful word is it divides it evenly or nicely or whatever. There's no remainder. So if d divides n, then q, then we have q and r is equal to 0. Um, r is always going to be uh, less than d and greater than or equal to 0. Let's see if that makes sense to you. Less than d, greater than or equal to 0. So it can be equal to 0. That's if, this, if d divides n nicely or evenly or whatever. And uh, it can be greater than r, like in this case, 20 is 20 is greater than 32, r is greater than d, but it's, uh, excuse me, r is less than d, and it's greater than 0, but it's it can never be greater than d. It can't even be equal to d. Because if it was equal to d, couldn't, if this was like equal to d, 32, couldn't we have divided this by, you know, the original number, 948, or whatever it would be if this was 32? Couldn't we divide 32 into or get another 32 out of the original number, n? So that's why it has to be less than. So this is this is always going to be true. And in the case where r is equal to 0, we have no remainder. And so uh, d divides n. That's the symbol for divides. It looks like the such that symbol. Okay. So why, do I, why am I talking about numbers? Because it leads to this and the fact that polynomials work just like numbers. So instead of, uh, what do we got? Instead of n equals q plus d, excuse me, q times d plus r, we're going to have the following. I'm going to have some polynomial as a function of x, and that's going to equal the quotient, just like above, x, times some other functions. A lot of times I use g and whatnot, but I'm going to use d again just, because to, just to be consistent. And I'm using p because n stood for number and p stands for polynomial. 
and then we have this remainder. So it's the same idea. So keeping that in keeping that in mind, if I take this whole f equation and divide it by d, d of x, on the left hand side I'm going to get that. That's going to leave me with just the quotient plus the remainder divided by the divisor. And the same things apply. If r, I guess I should say, if r of x is equal to 0, um, I'm sorry, let's not jump there. If, in the same way, your r of x has to be less than d of x, and, it, and we're really talking about degree now. And so when we say that, we're not talking about the value necessarily, though it would be, certainly, but also the degree. So when I say that, I mean the degree of r must be less than the degree of d. And of course, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. So for instance, a number with degree 0 a polynomial with equal to degree 0 is 7, because x to the 0 is 1, so we just write 7. So that would be a degree equal to 0. Degree greater than 0, 7x, because that has a degree of 1. But this degree is always going to be less than the degree of the divisor. And that should make sense, because if this was, for instance, if my original polynomial was 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus blah, 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 I don't care. And my divisor was d of x equals x minus 3. When I divide this by that, my resultant's going to be some 3x squared plus blah, 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 which is less in degree than that and greater than in degree than that. All right? So that's the division algorithm.